And now, some tragic local news. We have a report of another murder tonight. The plot of Blood Feast can be summarized very succinctly. In honor of Ishtar, the goddess of love, an Egyptian man slaughters women and harvests certain body parts from each, which he then collects in the back room of his catering business. Meanwhile, the police try and track him down. Simple as that. Blood Feast might not break the mold with its story beats. As soon as every scene starts, you can pinpoint exactly how it will end, and what the following scene will be. There is no mystery to help drive excitement. The killer is fully revealed in the opening, and his motivations explained just two scenes later. Regardless, Blood Feast remains a milestone of independent American horror, because it gets its bloody kicks elsewhere. Blood Feast is recognised as the first splatter film, a subgenre of movies that exists to unabashedly portray extreme scenes of violence and gore. Director Herschel Gordon Lewis was dissatisfied with the way films were focusing on the aftermath of murders, rather than the action itself, and set out to make a motion picture that would remedy the situation. I think it is fair to say, Mr. Lewis succeeded. Even today some of the visuals had me cancelling my delivery from the local Egyptian food truck the early shot of a woman's hacked off leg in the bathtub, and a later moment where pulpy blood dribbles from a woman's gaping mouth, were the main offenders for me. The inclusion of real animal organs, such as a massive sheep's tongue, combined with the camera's deliberate fascination, produces a queasy effect not commonly found in films of this age. To sum it up, it's not at all surprising that it left audiences shocked but eager to see more and equally not at all surprising that critics found it vulgar and appalling. Yes, most reviews found Blood Feast to be in very poor taste indeed, but it is obvious that Lewis and his team were just having a bit of fun. A quick film made for a quick buck, a slice of entertainment to take horror fans at one step further. Inevitably then, it does all feel very slapdash, and its tiny budget of $24,000 is felt in every flame. Some shots are out of focus. Audio levels are all over the place, featuring some horrendous ADR. Oh dear, I guess we'll have to eat hamburgers for dinner tonight. Did your man catch him as he ran out? No. Shoddy spray-painted hair. Characters act awkwardly to benefit the shot, and other times I'm certain they are reading the script for the first time during the actual take. Regardless of the fact we've watched the police unfold the entire mystery that the audience were already informed of firsthand. They felt it was critical for the cops to recap the whole plot after the climax. Indeed, the acting on display here is of a quality fit for 1934's Maniac. Relax, son. Just a while longer. Do your folks know you're in good hands? Besides, this is when it just starts getting nice. The romance between the lead policeman and Playboy star Connie Mason feels cheap and queasy in a very different way. And certain scenes of women lounging in states of undress feel straight out of Lewis's previous work as a director of nudie cutie comedies. The film's murder scenes are not safe either, despite being the main attraction, as the lack of impact sounds or groans and screams dampen the overall effect. But of course, the number one way you can tell a film was produced on a micro-budget is when we spend egregious amounts of time with a permanently disgruntled police chief sat at a desk in an office that only consists of one corner. A pathological killer on the loose and we can't find one clue! These are not criticisms to take to heart. Yes, it's dumb, but I fucking love it. In reality, Ishtar is not an Egyptian goddess at all. Who gives a damn? Herschel Gordon Lewis sure didn't. Neither should you. Go with it. Sometimes you're in the mood for some cheaply presented stabby stabby bang bangs, and Blood Feast more than delivers on that front. There are also instances of genuine quality that shine through, but perhaps they are accidental. The reveal of the corpse in the catering business is handled perfectly. And indeed, the torture scene that precedes it is suitably dark. 
Cutting from the opening scene of an Egyptian hacking a body part from a victim to the noseless face of the Sphinx is a neat little jest. Herschel, Gordon and Lewis followed up Blood Feast with two more splatter flicks, 2,000 Maniacs and Cut Me Blood Red, making up a spiritual series of films known as the Blood Trilogy. These three films and his pioneering ventures into the land of shock horror earned him the title The Godfather of Gore. An appropriate title indeed, and his impact on the genre can still be felt in Blood Red Ripples to this day. 